Let's bring in Ann Dignan just back on X. I'll bring her right in. Yeah, come, come right in. Does, does, does Jamie Dimon look at your receipts when you go on a junket to Las Vegas? <laughs> I hope not. No, you're at the Hilton Center there every three years, Con Expo. Con Egg, what was a distinctive feature of the U.S. in the international breadbasket when you look at machinery? Yeah, I think it was very interesting this year at Con Expo. The presence of the Chinese equipment manufacturers was just overwhelming. Uh, I How's took their manufacturing quality? Uh, actually, it has improved significantly over the last five, ten years. Uh, they can match or almost match the quality of U.S. Com companies now. And I think the most important thing that we learned at this trade show is that you know, the scale at which they're manufacturing, for example, um, one of the crane manufacturers mentioned that he, they're making 1,400 cranes a month versus the largest U.S. crane manufacturer who's manufacturing 3,000 a year. So you can imagine that with that kind of scale that they have leverage when they buy steel, they have leverage when they uh, get uh, priorities from suppliers in, in the event of Did something like that. Did you adjust your buy, hold, sell on Caterpillar, Deer, and crane operators? I mean, if they're moving that quickly, where are we going to be in 18 months? Well, I went into the meeting uh, and the show a little bit cautious on the crane manufacturers in particular because cranes are kind of unique. Uh, when you look at a crane out in the street uh, in New York or anywhere, you really don't see the brand of the producer of the crane. You see the name of the rental company. Right. Uh, and so I think that on the crane side, it's going to be easier for these well, Chinese companies to penetrate the market. And, and folks, full disclosure, when you read an end I didn't know, you need a beverage of your choice because <laughs> it gets a little detailed. Here's the real world of security analysis this, this we would this is over the day and it's not like buy hold sell this is just a paragraph this is a sentence of Dignan in 1998 the mobile crane market was very fragmented with small players 72 percent of the market now there's four but that's that insight of consolidation can America's dominant nuts and bolts manufacturers can they compete with these new sophisticated international companies you know, I think it's a great question. There are going to be winners and there are going to be losers. Uh, when I was over in China in uh, November, December, I thought it was very interesting that even when I mentioned the name Caterpillar to their competitors, everybody went, ooh, Caterpillar. So Caterpillar has a great brand reputation, a great brand globally. Uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's theirs to lose. Uh, there are a lot of smaller domestic suppliers that I think are going to struggle when it comes to competing against the kind of scale that the Chinese have. Here's Caterpillar's chart. We've got a quote here from Ann. <clears throat> when in China, really nothing else matters. Nice backup, Victor. He can walk backward like that. I can't even chew straight. When in China, all else is secondary. <laughs> What a boom. I mean, come on, top of the market. Everybody's on the Caterpillar trade. Doesn't that get your radar up? Uh, I think if you were to call the peak of the cycle based on the number of investors who showed up at Caterpillar's analyst meeting the other day, they had 250 investors show up. Uh, I've never seen so much interest in the sector. Uh, so if I were to call the peak, it probably would be right now. But we're so early in this cycle. You know, we've got China booming, we've got Brazil booming, we've got India booming. But we haven't even seen the U.S. construction equipment cycle or the construction activity cycle pick up yet. You know, so we talk about used cars, retired cars, if you will, in America. How tired is our construction equipment? Actually, at this point, you know, the peak of the cycle was 2005. So we're now six years after mm -hmm. the peak. So equipment is aging. I think the good thing about equipment in the U.S. is all the used equipment is gone. It's gone to Brazil, it's gone to Russia, it's gone to India, it's gone overseas. So we've got uh, a huge uh, pent-up demand out there as soon as construction activity starts to pick up. Uh, bring up chart three, uh, Rex, if you would, not elegant chart three. I want to go back to food here, and this is a new chart from the IMF, 110 years of food adjusted for inflation. And you can see the, the cheap food of 10 years ago, and we've just come up. So that breadbasket play with machinery, that's a lot different than cranes in China, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, one is hard commodities, the other is soft commodities, but at the end of the day, it's really the emerging markets that are driving the incremental growth in demand for both food and for equipment. Now, on the food side, I think we're facing a very, very interesting spring. Uh, March, March 31st, the USDA will announce how many acres we're going to see planted of commodities like corn. Uh, and this will be the first uh, number that they'll give that will be based on farmer surveys. Uh, we need at least 92 million acres of corn 
to even hold steady with ending inventories. If we don't get 92 million acres on March 31st, corn prices are going up, up, up. Do you and J.P. Morgan commodity analysts, do you agree with Professor Irwin at the University of Illinois that a $10 bushel in corn is feasible? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. If we don't get 92 million acres this spring, if we don't get perfect weather so we get trend line yields, uh, we, we will okay. be out of corn. Key question, deer, caterpillar, and the rest of your watch, is ethanol their friend or their enemy? Is it distortive to those companies? It's definitely distortive to U.S. agriculture. Ethanol now consumes 40% of our corn. Ten years ago, consumed zero. So that's just been a whole new Somebody source of demand. Somebody told me it was demand. two Iowas. Two it's Iowas. two Iowas. That, that's about right. That's about that's right. right. What's your prediction on corn acreage? Do you have one? Uh, I think it, it's going to be... Can you imagine dinner with Ann Dyson as she tries to figure out corn acreage? Well, I go corn out to the acreage. farm and I talk to the farmers. And what do the farmers say? Forget about you and me all dressed up fancy. What do the farmers say? Farmers are having a hard time this year because input costs oh, just went up. stop it. <laughs> They're having a hard time choosing because both corn and soybeans are extraordinarily profitable. So sometimes they like to go back to soybeans because when, when you plant soybeans, soybeans create nitrogen in the soil. When you grow corn, you have to consume nitrogen. And so nitrogen has gone up a lot over the last three or four months. So if a farmer is concerned about input costs, he'll trend more towards soybeans this spring. They just said in my ear I should smile. I was remembering <laughs> trying to memorize a Krebs cycle. In microbiology, you talk about nitrogen in the soil. My eyes glazed over during that week in <laughs> microbiology. Here's a chart, folks. Uh, elegant chart three. Diagon deduces duopoly in deer. I did that just for you. It's D to the fourth. Diagon deduces duopoly in deer. Okay, deer caterpillar. You can see the boom versus the bank stocks. What's the next deer? Is there a, is there a new kid on the block for that duopoly? Is there a name? that's coming along five, 10 years out? Uh, I think with, uh, in the agricultural equipment sector, yeah. the sector has consolidated a lot. Yeah. So you really only have three players in North America. You've got John Deere, you've got Case New Holland, CNH, and you've got Agco. Agco is kind of the young kid on the block. Oh, come on, you gotta have a small cap favorite here. Uh, I'm neutral on Agco and, uh, at the moment because they have a high exposure mm. to Brazil. But, okay. you know, they are one that we're watching out for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ann Dagnan with us off of the important every three-year expo in Las Vegas where all the manufacturers of equipment get together.